All right, Mr. Mullis back again. Now we're going to go over the uh, how to actually turn the machine on and get our rotation right and all that. So what I've done is loaded up this end mill, okay, in my collet. Naturally, I had to put the draw bar in the top of the machine and tighten it up, put the collet in, the end mill in, and tighten it clockwise, okay, and tighten it up in there in the machine. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this switch on to the left. I'm going to swap it. I'm going to turn it to the left and we're going to look at the rotation of the machine. Okay. Alright. So the rotation of the machine of the cutter was around to the right. Okay. Now, I'm going to take the switch and turn it to the right. And I want you to look at the cutter. Okay, the cutter was going in, in the wrong direction, the opposite direction. It was rotating to the left. That's not what you want. So, now, I'm going to swap the range on the side of the machine. Okay, I'm going to go from low range to high range. Okay, I'm going to swap the range of the machine. And that's going to make everything go opposite up here. So when I turn the switch to the left, the cutter is going to go in the opposite direction than it did a while ago. So your range selector is going to swap the direction of your cutter. So you have to keep that in mind. Always look at the rotation of your tool. Not necessarily what this switch is doing up here. Okay. If your tool is rotating clockwise around to the right, then you have the proper rotation that's going to cut. If it's turning to the left, it's going backwards, it's not going to cut, it's going to dull the cutter or break the cutter, mess up your part or both. So always the cutter must be going to the right. Whatever you have to do to the switch, to the right, to the left, just make cutter go around to the right and you'll be in good shape. Alright, I'm going to go back to low range for our cut. Okay. Now, I have a piece of aluminum in our vise right here. I'm going to cut on the side of the end mill and show you how to face off the end of it here. All right. Now, I have it on parallels. I have this little piece of material on two parallels in the vise here. We take our dead blow and we seat it on top of our parallels. Okay. Tap it in good, make sure it's nice and flat. And what I'm going to do is take my, this is called a quill lock. And I'm going to take the lock off. I can bring the handle down. And I can lower my end mill to the level that I need to make my cut. All right. Now I need to manipulate my Y and my X. Get close to my part. And then I'm going to touch off with the tool just like we did on the lathe. When I say touch off, what does that mean? That means go up to, the, go up to your piece, make a very light cut, the lightest cut you can make, and still make a chip. And then I'm going to make my Y go back, make my X go in or to the right, and then make my cut. Now, on this end of the part, with our rotation around to the right, we want to go from the front of the part to the back. Okay? That would be conventional milling. If we went from the back of the part to the front, that would be climb milling. Okay? You always want to use conventional milling whenever possible on a, on a manual machine. All right, so I'm going to make the cut, and then we'll go over it a little bit.
Okay. Got your rotation right. You're going from the front to the back in the Y. All right. You have to touch off, dial in whatever you're going to take with your dials here, and then lock your X because you don't want the table moving around. Whatever axis you're not using, you want to lock. In this case, we, we was not using the X. So we locked it. Okay, we're using the Y. Now, if you're going the other way, you would lock the Y up under here, okay, on the table. So whatever axis you're not using, that's what you lock. Okay, so that was just a facing cut from front to back. Now we're going to pull our end mill up a little bit, and we're just going to go across the top of the part, all right, with the end of the end mill. Okay. What I'm going to do is get on top of it, is get my end mill over my part. I'm going to come up in my Z to touch off. Okay. Then I'm going to take my, take my cutter off the part just like you do on a lathe or any machine tool. I'm going to put some input in. I'm just going to come up in the Z and then I'm going to operate my X direction and make the cut. Here we go. Gotta get it going the right way. So that's, your, that's the end of the end mill cutting across the top of the part, okay? Now you could use it in the X or the Y, it doesn't matter. But like I wanted to illustrate the bottom of the, the mill cutting, okay? So you have side cutting and end cutting, all right? Now, these things, the, these dials down here are graduated, and they have a little knurled um, collar on them that you can loosen the little knurled collar, little knurled collar, and spin the graduated wheel here. So you can set it on zero, and then dial in the amount that you need to come up or down, or go in on your X and your Y. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to be um, on your hammerheads. You're going to be doing a cut across the across the top of the part, and um, that's how you're you're going to pull it off here with the end mill. All right, I'll see you in the shop. All right, Mr. Mullis here. I'm going to show you how to put a drill chuck in your machine. Okay, um, yes, all the implements go in the same. But I'm just going to use a drill chuck because, you know, I showed you the collet before. I'll show you the drill chuck now. So you can use the vise handle, okay, what, what tightens up the vise, okay. You can also use that to tighten up your draw bar on top, okay. So you would take your drill chuck, put it up in the spindle, and then you're going to have to rotate on top of the machine. You're going to have to rotate your handle, your um, draw bar, I'm sorry, to the right, and it's screwing down into the threads that are in the top of the drill chuck. Okay, and it's going to draw it up in there a little bit at a time. Tighten it as much as you can by hand, okay? And then, you, like I said, you can use the vise handle, put it on top of your draw bar, hold your brake, and then finish tightening, okay? Finish tightening your drill chuck in the machine. Now, one thing you don't want to do is over tighten it, okay? Just firm it up nice and firm around to the right and you're good to go. All right, same thing with a collet um, that we that we talked about before. Okay, that's your drill truck. See you in the shop.